presentation environment within Inventor 2017 has actually changed pretty significantly. I've got an assembly here, and what I want to do is I want to start with this assembly. I want to create an exploded view from this assembly, I should say. So I'm going to click New, and I'm going to create a presentation file, really no different than I would have in the past you know, number of releases. Notice how it prompts me for an assembly, and I can still come in here and I can still specify you know, which design view, which positional representation, and which um, level detail I want to start with. But I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to open that. And what it's going to do is create the initial view of this assembly. Now notice that things are a little bit different here. So over here on the side here, I can see my snapshot view. I've actually got the browser turned off right now. So let's go into the user interface and let's just... Oh, it's just been minimized. So you can see that we can actually position these. So we don't have to have them side by side. I'm going to take that and snap that over top of, of the new snapshot view area. Okay, so within this, what I want to do is I want to turn some components on or off. One thing I've noticed that within the browser, notice if I right click, there's no visible option. If I just select one, the visibility option is there. But I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to right click and I'm going to pick visibility and I'm going to turn those components off. So that's what the browsers really become within the presentation environment. It's really with working with the components themselves. Now I'm going to rotate this around a bit. Let's just zoom extents. Let's rotate this around. Let's flip this to perspective. And this is going to be my first view here. So it says use the new snapshot view to create a snapshot. So I go back to presentation. I'm going to create a new snapshot view and it's captured that view for me. Now from here, what I can do is I can actually rename that and I'm going to say, you know, ISO assembled. And we can see some other options is that I can actually publish this directly to raster from here. So JPEG, bitmap, those type of things. Or I can actually generate a drawing view right from here. So right from the right click menu, I can use that snapshot view. Now just below here, I can see that I've got this storyboard. And right now the storyboard isn't really doing anything. So we can see kind of my safe area here. And then what I can do is I can pick the position. So I'm going to scroll this ahead here to about 10 seconds, and I'm going to apply a tweak. So tweaks aren't that much different than they were in the past. Here's the component that I want to tweak, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the triad here, and I'm going to click and drag this component. Now I've realized that I'd also like to maybe include the shaft, so I'm going to click that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that component out as well. So now that I've done that, and we can see that right now the duration is two and a half seconds, and I'll come back to this in a second. I'm also seeing the full trail, which is good, um, and I'm happy with where the positions are. So I've done my move, everything looks good, so I'm going to click and I'm going to apply those. So now notice that as I drag this, I can actually see the components go in and out. So it's taking two and a half seconds for those components to change in position. I can also come in here and click the play button and I can actually watch that happen. So it's going to get to about the, the two and a half point here. Or I guess I should say about the seven and a half point here. And what we're going to see is that the components start to change in position. So it's the timeline that helps me set that. So let's, let's take this and let's actually expand this just a little bit. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And I can see where those were added. So it actually added them in kind of you know, one after another. So let's do something like this and let's take this and let's slide this. And now what we can see is that there's a slight delay, but now that they're actually moving at the kind of more at the same time. I'm also going to take this one and I'm going to make this one a little bit longer. So what we can see now is that it's going to start sooner to start moving out of its way and then that shaft component comes out. Or what we can do is take this and move it so that, you know what, these are all kind of happening at this time. Let's make this one smaller. Let's put this one in here. Let's make this one a little bit longer. So you can see how I'm able to make changes to this and have these components change or as they're tweaking. So as we do that, what I want to do is I want to start applying transparency. So I'm going to say that I want to um, take this component and I want to apply opacity. So I'm going to say that I actually want this to go down to about 20% and I'm going to accept that and notice how it's added that transparency. So now 
we can see that those components are going to come and then what's going to happen is it's going to go transparent so i was able to do that with that um, transparency option or sorry the opacity option and then i just use the timeliner here to make that a more gradual transparency so instead of it just becoming opaque automatically it's going to kind of fade into that so once it gets about to this point what i want to do is i want to capture the camera so I'm going to come back to my kind of my zero point here. I'm going to capture the camera. I'm going to move this ahead a bit. And right about here, what I want to do is I want to rotate this a bit. So I'm just going to rotate this a bit and I'm going to capture the camera. So now let's put that camera in there and now we can see how it's going to rotate. And then once it hits that camera spot, it's going to rotate there again. Now again, I can actually use this to drag this so it becomes a little bit more gradual, a little bit slower in a rotation. So I can just drag that longer, I can move that around. So we can see now how that's gonna change in position. And then once we get here, what I wanna do is again, I wanna rotate this around so we're actually looking at it from the back. So let's take this to about seven seconds and I'm gonna capture the camera. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna fade into one, it's automatically snapped it and it's gonna continue into this spot. So once we get about here, I wanna start tweaking the components. So let's go ahead to 10 seconds. Let's take this component and let's tweak it. Again, using the triad, I'm gonna pull that component out a bit. I'm gonna click the check mark to accept that. And what there is now is there's this move in here. So let's make this a little bit longer. And again, let's use this, let's just scrub it. And we can see now that things are gonna start happening. So it's gonna rotate and then that component's gonna move. So all in all, it's a lot easier to build the animations. So it's a lot easier to kind of know how that thing's going to start exploding, when it's going to start exploding, um, and manage that. Once you've got that, what you can do is you can actually publish that to a video. So I can take this animation here, this storyboard, and I can publish this out to a particular video or to a particular raster image. So you can see based on these snapshot views. You can also have multiple storyboards. So my second storyboard here, notice that it can actually be a start um, from the previous or a clean one, but I can have different storyboards. So maybe this one's all about putting the hardware together. So I can have a separate set of tweaks specific to this storyboard. So you can have your multiple steps to assemble um, your various assemblies. Okay, well, let's rotate this a little bit more here. Let's do something like this. Let's actually flip away from, actually, you know what, I'm okay with this. And I'm going to create a new snapshot view. So now we've got our two views that we can flip back and forth to. This one is just showing you that it's actually towards the end of the animation. So by double clicking on it, what I've done is actually activated the view. So you can see here, and I'm actually editing the view. So I've decided that I wanted to rotate this a little bit like that. I'm going to finish the view. I have now updated it. So I can quickly change these views by double clicking on them. And that's how you can make your changes to them. So again, also remember that you can um, edit them by double clicking on them. Now the tweaks are also listed in the browser here, at least the ones that have distances. So you can also use your browser to make changes to them or a right click down here will also allow you to edit the tweaks or edit the time specifically. So if there's a set time you want on them, you can edit them. Okay, so I've kind of gone through this kind of quick, but this is really just kind of a high level overview of what's changed in that presentation environment in Inventor 2017. We can also use, like I said, these snapshots to generate drawings. So I'm gonna right click on here. I'm gonna create a drawing view. It's just gonna make me save this. Just use a standard one, and you can see now that it's using that snapshot to create that particular view. So we'll click OK, and it's generated the view. So again, that's what's new within the presentation environment in Inventor 2017.